sunrise, new days dawning, and it's calling you and me. Where the mighty Mississippi flows by Memphis, Tennessee, we've got woodlands, fields, and water. Hey, there is no Saturday morning and welcome to another edition of the award-winning Outdoors with Larry Ray. Brought to you proudly by the Tennessee Wildlife Resources Agency. Now, here's your host, Larry Ray. Hey, welcome to Outdoors with Larry Ray as we talk outdoors the next 90 minutes, the fastest 90 minutes on outdoor radio program. And on this, the uh, second Saturday in August. And of course, that means uh, we get to get Ron Wong and John Gordon. Uh, not in the studio, but by phone is our co-host. Good morning, Ron. Good morning, Larry. Good morning, John. Good morning, everybody. Hey, John. Hey, it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. It's going to be hot today, but uh, that's okay. John. John is okay. in that mo- moving mode. Hopes to get through moody, uh, moving uh, out of Hernando and uh, where you say close to uh, Panola County. Uh, ba- well, yes, correct, Batesville. Down to Batesville, okay. And John, of course, is a senior communication specialist at Ducks Unlimited. And, uh, of course, Ron needs no introduction. He is the man that fishes eight days a week. You know, I mean, uh, the Beatles wrote a song about him, I think. But um, <laughs> he is everywhere, and uh, and we're glad to have them to, uh, both of these guys on as we uh, kick off. And uh, I've, I've rejuggled things, and uh, next next week is the 19th anniversary show. I I was uh, looking back through all the records and everything else, and so I'm not going to tell you who's going to be on next week's show, but we're going to have lots of calls. We're going to keep Shelby McCall, our show producer, pretty busy as we talk about 19 years on the air and almost 500 shows. Well, that and it's, it's pretty remarkable where we started and, uh, and where we are now, but uh, appreciate these two guys. I know that... Uh, Ron, I know there's a, an event that's going on this morning that uh, I know you'll be there. I'm going to try to be there, but a lady that touched a lot of lives just because she's a Quan is, uh, is there, is Mary Quan uh, passed away? Uh, the, uh, yeah, that's, that's Connie Quan that passed away. Yes. And, you know, so many people have met her. Yes. Uh, because of. You know, Connie, yeah, that's right. Of, yeah. of the um, Patriots of the... of the day before Thanksgiving lunch, she was always there helping out. Yes, too yes. At Harris Quan's Auto Shop, so so many people know of her, and, and, and of course, uh, her, for her having to raise uh, Peanut <laughs> Harris and Jason. Yes, yeah. That's a full, full life. But she lived a long, full yes, she life, did. and uh, you know she'll certainly be missed. But uh, her funeral will be this morning. After I leave the radio show here, uh, I'll get ready, put my little suit on, and mm-hmm. go to the funeral and pay my respects. Well, we want to pay our respects to, to the, all the Quan family and everything, because what a legacy and. Uh, 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 for sure, Mr. Quan, who is, uh, I know, has taken this hard along with the boys, but uh, yes, uh, it is what it is. And so we wanted to uh, salute the Quan family this morning. And I know uh, you, have, this is kind of a prime time. August is for you, uh, John, in your capacity with DU as part of the DU TV. Uh, as you told me, August is DU what? Do you conserve month, Larry? Conserve month. So, conserve. Uh, and so, what does that mean? Well, that means that 
our uh, DU uh, conserve short film series. Yes. Premieres. Four films. August. Yeah. Four. Uh, four films. And uh, this year we're exploring the uh, priority two DU landscapes of the Mississippi Alluvial Valley, the Southern Great Plains, the Chesapeake Bay, and the Great Lakes. And so, uh, as, as, as I think, uh, Chesapeake Bay is uh, is currently for this week, if I'm not mistaken. And then uh, they're really put, it's cool, folks. I mean, you just, all you got to, it's real simple to go uh, to find these things uh, with Ducks Unlimited and the way they put them out. Uh, and all of, are they all about the same length, John? Are they? Yeah, the, the the short films, DU film series, and conserve are all in the in the six to eight minute range. Yes, all so right. uh, you, you get a lot of great content in that short time. Um, and conserve is really great. You really get a, a really in depth behind the scenes look at what we do. Yes, uh, on the ground around the nation uh, to conserve wetlands and waterfall habitats. Um, like I said, Chesapeake Bay came out. To, this week and uh, it's been really well received. It's uh, you know gives a, a, a good look at the challenges uh, of that part of the world and you know the habitat loss that, that's occurred there and what we've really done to try to mitigate all that. And uh, like I said, it's just it's a really good look for our members and for the general public to see what Ducks Unlimited really does on the ground. And you know that's uh, I didn't realize Chesapeake Bay that's sixty four thousand mile watershed. Uh, that, <laughs> that's correct. Stretching uh, all the way up into New York State. Yeah, uh, yeah. Virginia, so Maryland, all the way up to New York State. It's almost as as many lakes as Ron Wong fishes in. You know, when you when you start, <laughs> there is, and you know, the Chesapeake Bay today, <laughs> yeah, uh, is one great fishery. You know, years ago it was very polluted, but they worked very hard cleaning it up. Uh, it is one of the places. Uh, where the Atlantic stripers go and yep. spawn, and yeah. then in the upper Chesapeake Bay, there's been many, many a largemouth bass tournaments held. It's quite a fishery. Well, I know, uh, Ron, uh, we like to kick it off uh, in this first segment. Uh, I've been seeing some uh, some good fish you've been catching, I, and I've had a lot of some folks have asked me uh, to ask you about uh, all of a sudden we had a cool spell. And now it's going to get back to what it ought to be. What what does that do to uh, fishing for this weekend? Well, the water temperatures did fall because of the little cool spill that we had. Uh, water temperatures fell from the low 90s to the mid 80s. Uh-huh. Uh huh. But but uh, like today, uh, the temperatures are going to be back <laughs> up in the 90s. Yep. So we can expect uh, our surface temperatures to go back up uh, on the water, but. Uh, the fishing is good early morning, late in the evening, or or during, before right before a thunderstorm or when it gets cloudy. Yeah, top water baits are working real well. Uh, a sexy dog, a sexy uh, which dog, is a stick bait works very well. Yep, I'm using a buzz bait also, but I'm take I'm going to give you a tip for all you listeners out all right, there. Take it, take a tip. I'm, ta- I'm, I'm taking my skirt off of my buzz bait okay i'm putting on a four inch swim bait ah or a three and three quarter inch swim bait and that's it what i have found is the fish will eat that swim bait so much better and not have to look at the skirt or anything it's just so much more natural but that's working real well and once the sun comes up uh you can take a 6xd 5xd crankbait and catch them or our Carolina rig a ten inch worm. Well, we run. Oh my, run it works well anywhere you go, whether it's Sardis, Pickwick. It makes no difference, and even private lakes. Uh, we're doing that, and you're able to catch a lot of fish. Well, we got uh, Ron walked right in there. Uh, the last guy on this show today. Uh, some people call him the Godfather of the Mississippi River. And uh, he knows a lot about fin- swim jig techniques, right, Ron? When we talk to uh, yes, he does. The seventy-one-year-old Tom Mansoor, I can't he wait. He actually <laughs> has a signature jig 
yes. that Bass Pro Shop had on their shelves at one time, and I'm not sure whether they do now or not. Well, three decades. Fine, He's been to this. Fine swim jig. And we're going to close it out with Tom, who recently won a tur- tournament. We li- I love those. John, just forgive us for a while. We loved those guys in the 70s, okay? I don't mean the 1970s, John. Okay, I'm talking about the age. So if you get kind of confused out there, but um, uh, we are going to talk some fishing. Uh, hope to go. Mark Copley's going to kick in. Mark is uh, moved to South Carolina as part of the Lou's family. Talk to Mark about his career at uh, Strike King and Lou's. Andy Tweed, our man here for almost three decades as a law enforcement officer. Uh, if you run into Andy, you know you you don't forget him. Well. He was recently named Hunter Education Instructor of the Year. And this was before we even asked Andy to be on the show. But then, of course, then Ron's got us man with the man, the Z-Man himself. And that's Glenn Young, who's been on the show before. Can't wait to talk to Glenn. I understand they got a bait called the Goat or something like that, Ron. I mean, The Goat, um, yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> I want to t- uh, I, I was introduced yeah. at virtual ICAT. Well, well I want to talk about the Goat. You know that. And, and then, hey. Our second Canadian on Outdoors of Larry Ray in the last uh, six weeks, and that's Chris Johnston, uh, who just won uh, a BASS Elite Tournament. And he's got a great story about uh, his career and his brother, Corey. Uh, And then again, close it out with Tom Mansour. Let's take a break on Outdoors of Larry Ray. Come back and hook up with Mark Copper, John Gordon, Ron Wong as our co-host. Shelby McCall pushing the buttons, and we'll be right back. 